Hello, Writerly friends. It is the end of the second week of October. It is Friday. Um, so it is time for my weekly Preptober check-in. I think last week's video, I actually called it a write-in, but it's a check-in um, of my Preptober progress, but it's not the weekend yet. So you may be kind of curious why I'm introducing this on a Friday. It's actually Friday morning. I haven't even got my writing in for the day yet. But I had a writerly realization that was very mind blowing and eye opening for me. And I thought, you know what, I need to share this. It probably is not going to be mind blowing for many of you, but if you are an over writer and an over plotter like me, then it may come in handy. Really quickly, if you're new here, hi, I'm Joanna G. Holden. I write Christian fantasy. I'm a mommy author, I'm self published. And all of the videos on this channel are geared around that. The Mommy Author Life, the self-publishing journey, and writing Christian fantasy. Uh, it is my passion, one of my many passions. Um, but it is my main, it is the sole focus of this channel. Um, so if any or all of that sounds good to you, be sure to subscribe and click the like on this video and all the fun things so you can stay updated on my writing journey and the things like this that I'm gonna be sharing that may be helpful. <laughs> to someone else who didn't know them previous to yesterday. So I was writing on Tuesday and I'd had two pretty good writing days. And my goal, as you know, for the month of October has been to finish my current WIP, this first draft by the end of the month, or at least get as close as I can. Like the goal is there to push me to try to get as close as I can, whether I finish in a month or not. And I've been right, trying to write about a scene a day during the work week to accommodate that goal and then do my outlining and fun stuff on the weekends to kind of give myself a break and be able to play a little bit. And I had a realization on Tuesday. Tuesday was a very big writing day. I wrote for about an hour to an hour and a half in the afternoon. And then I ended up writing about two and a half hours in the evening, which was nice. I liked having that much time. But during that time, I was pretty much just writing on this one scene. But I wrote so many words and I felt like I was just stuck in this scene. And I started complaining about it to some readily friends, as we do, because I looked ahead at the rest of the outline and I only had four scenes left in act two. But when I went ahead and looked at act three, I actually had 14 scenes planned and I've been calculating, I had done my math um, post, post, figuring out the outline that I needed to plan for about 2000 words per scene. So I only needed about 10 scenes per quarter of the book to be able to hit the 80,000 words and looking ahead at 14 scenes and being like, wow, if I have many more 3k scenes, this is going to be a, how am I supposed to be cutting my words and trying? I'm already way over uh, because the first half of the book, as I've mentioned many times is already at 84,000 words. And I was complaining and I, I mentioned it to a friend and she was um, kind of sharing awe at the fact that I had a scene that was three to 4,000 words long. And she was explaining how her scenes tend to be between 1,000 and 1,500 words, sometimes up to 2,000 because each piece of an event is the scene for her. Even if they happen in the same room, even if they happen from the same perspective, she outlines based off of a conversation and then you move on to the next little piece and then you move on to the next little piece. And I suddenly sat back and was like, oh, because I see scenes as an event. So for instance, there have been two scenes thus far that have been huge word count scenes. And both of them, the one that I just wrote yesterday, there was in the outline, there was like a line that said, you know, show passage of time, a very brief narration to show the passage of time and kind of keep us in the loop of what's happening. And then this event happens. They go for this ride in the country. Well, I wrote 500 words of narration because that's how much it took to show the amount of time and what was happening. And then I wrote a scene that wasn't even in the outline because I suddenly realized I have to know how this chick is like got invited to this. I have to bridge the narration somehow because we need to see inside of her head and see what's going on with this particular plot point that we've been following, this stake that we've been following that is getting upped a little bit every time we come back to it. 
And so I ended up having this scene that was about 1600 words long. And then I still hadn't gotten to the main point of the original scene that I had outlined, which is this ride in the countryside and this very important dialogue and all this. A similar thing happened. There was a ballroom scene that ended up being about 3000 words. And there was a, she comes into the room and there's a lot of stuff that happens. And then she has a conversation with someone that's quite a lengthy conversation. And then she gets invited to dance and she has this other interaction. That's three scenes right there. No wonder I have been messing up with the outline because I've attempted to do math where, and like I already said, I attempted you know 2000 words per scene. So how many scenes should I fit in an act if each quarter of the book needs to be about 20K? And I realized no wonder because right there is two scenes that I've just doubled my word count because the two scenes should have been four to five scenes. And if you go from 4,000 words to 10,000 words, that is a lot of words. So I have been over plotting. And when I say over plotting, I don't mean like getting too deep into the nitty gritty of each of the outline and like getting lost in it. I mean, putting in too many scenes. And now I understand I've actually been putting twice as many scenes in as I thought that I was for a lot of them. Like some of them have been just a little snippet of conversation, which has been when it surprised me that they've been short and the other scenes are huge. So I, it's too late to fix this book. It's too late to fix this outline. I am already almost to the third act. And at this point, I just need to go through and write what I have because I know that everything that I have put in for the third act, at least, is necessary to the plot. So whether I condense words or as I'm going through, I realize that the outline needs to be changed up. We'll get there when we get there. I'm not going to push anything for that. But my next book that I outline, I will not be outlining the same. I'm going to start the scene by scene part of the outline with the math already done, how long I would like this book to be maximum because I am an overwriter. I need to keep the track of my workout. Um, and then how many words per scene. And if I am limiting the amount of stuff that happens per scene, that is going to change the game for how many words. So hopefully fingers crossed, I am not going to end up with a repeat with the next book that I have had with this book, which is 50,000 words that I'm just out of the first act and 84,000 words that I've just hit the halfway mark. But I will get back with you tomorrow and after, after outlining, and I'll let you know how today went and how the whole week went in general as far as word count and scenes and stuff and what my plan is for next week. And I'll talk to you then. All right, Ready friends, it is now Saturday and it is actually the most glorious Saturday. I have actually, I've been able to wear a sweater all day inside and outside, which is abnormal. I think it's finally kind of getting warmer outside now that it's almost the end of the day. We get hotter later here where we live. Um, but it's been a glorious day and it's been a good week overall. I had a bit of a crisis in the middle of the week, as I mentioned yesterday, but Yesterday was a super productive day despite that, and today was super productive. And I may even be able to get in a little tomorrow, a little extra. So yeah, I think that things are really going very well for this, this whole project, this whole goal. Well, two projects, two goals, but let's get, let's get into those details now. Um, a total, my total of words for the week for Swan Song, the YA fairy tale, uh, was 11,085. Um, and out of that one, on, hang on, I did one on Monday, I did one on Tuesday, I did not do one Wednesday, I did one Thursday, and I did two yesterday. So yeah, I did five. So I got five done uh, over the course of the week, which is huge. I, I think that if I had done that many last week, I would already be heading into act three this week, but I'm not going to complain. I feel really good about where the characters are going. I've been able to enjoy the the budding romance and I've been able to kind of sneak in some character moments for the uh, love interest character that have been really good where I can see where he's progressing and even if I do have to go back and I know that I'm going to have to go back in the rewrite and take all of his scenes and severely condense and chop up and spice up because uh, being a king, a lot of his are like council type scenes and, you know, dealing with the nobility and the gentry and so on. So while that is what naturally would be, that doesn't mean that it's the most interesting thing to read. So I will probably be condensing and chopping up those. Even with that, I'm really excited to see 
all of those things going through anyway. And we're getting a beautiful glimpse into who he is becoming as he is growing. And I love it. And Eliza, oh, oh, she speaks to me so clearly these days. <laughs> she really does. Um, we're seeing a lot of her concern for her own family and for all the situation that she left behind when she fled home, sneaking in. And we're seeing a, an interesting portion of her character arc in this section where she's allowing herself to be maybe a little bit more selfish. And it, it started as not being a bad thing. It started off as almost being more like self-care. And now it is turning into she is she needs to get out of it soon or she's going to be you know, doing it at the expense of the people that she's been spending the whole book trying to save and she's having gonna have to start making some hard choices. And we're right around the corner from some big reveals that I had been waiting for and I have not been sure how they were gonna line up and they are gonna line up oh, just beautifully, at least to me. I'm sure when we beta read, we're gonna get lots of feedback. It's gonna be a whole thing, but that's okay. So those, that was the writing portion of it. I feel like I did a phenomenal job and I'm very proud of myself and we're just gonna leave that there. I was very tired at the end of the week mentally, um, just very tired. It's been a while since I've exercised these muscles, these mental muscles as much as I have. Um, and so I'm, I'm that, I feel very satisfied with where that's been. The second goal we know was outlining an entire book this month on my Saturdays and sometimes Sundays if it felt like that was going to be a thing. And to keep it loose and to keep it fun and to keep it lightweight. I wanted to show you guys what I got done without actually showing you obviously because I haven't really shown you anything about this project yet. So of course I was following the Save the Cat Writes a Novel Beats during the live streams from Bethany Adesada's YouTube channel. And as I did last week, I will be sure to link uh, the video that she posted about those live streams in this vlog, like in the description box, so that if that's something that you would like to do during the month of October, for something you'd like to go back and listen to, uh, you have the opportunity to do that. But this book, I was looking back through, I think I have genuinely only read like the first, what is that, a quarter of the book, which is where the beats are. I have not gotten into the genres. There's 10 genres to fit any story. And I would really like to read that a little bit more. Um, and then in the YA version of this, which is what Bethany is using largely, um, it actually has a section specifically on multiple points of view and a section specifically on writing uh, how to how to plot using the beats over a series because it is a little bit different. Um, so, which my series will be basically the same because these are standalones. Um, but if I was doing something, and I do plan on doing several series that kind of build on each other in a more like, you know, one long timeline, I want to go back and look at that. So what I have largely been using other than that, so I have kind of used that as a background, but I realized if you guys remember me talking last week, I realized that I, I desperately needed to... Uh, to figure out my characters a little bit first, because for me, my stories are mostly character driven. Um, I try to keep them a balance of character and plot so that both of them are interwoven around each other in a way where you cannot really separate them and they're both pushing each other forward. But I do, it was very character heavy. And so I uh, kind of took a little bit of a break from the Save the Cats part of it, or Save the Cat singular, and I pulled out, and I'm gonna kind of Hi, her name, even though I don't think you can see my, my chicken scratch very well. The workbook, the uh, plot your novel workbook section, the character sheets out of that from the Heart Readings channel. Again, I will link it that below as well. I think I'll link the, uh, the plot your novel uh, video series in this video because that's where I got these character sheets and they have been immensely helpful for like an at a glance kind of thing as well as again, my own, which I haven't really done, but I did that for the main character uh, as well as for the love interest, who in this, oh, in the all of these fairy tales are very much like, they're not just the love interest. They're point of view characters and they have a lot to do with the story and they have their own, each of them have a complete arc and they intertwine, the arcs intertwine with the main characters and with the story. So I did the main characters. I did last week figure out, and this was something that I don't think I had a chance to say, but I did last week figure out the villain. Uh, I have not done their character sheet yet, but I'm going to. 
Um, and then I switched over today. So I got the two, the main character and the love interest figured out for the most part. Uh, and I at least know enough about the villain to kind of start moving forward. And then I switched over and used the Preptober worksheets. I can find those. I decided to go ahead and skip over the, uh, oh, that's the title of the book, which you do not need to see. <laughs> Uh, this is for Project Glass, by the way. I didn't say that this is for Project Glass, which is the next fairy tale in the series. And as I mentioned, they're all standalones. And I'm going to do an announcement probably at the end of the year, which fairy tale this is specifically uh, and kind of my pitch for it as I go into um, drafting it next year. Not plotting. I'm plotting now. Drafting next year. I really would like this to be the book that I write next year. So I went ahead and I skipped over. There's like two idea brainstorms where you're figuring out things that you love in fiction in general, which I didn't feel like was necessary because I already know what I'm, what I'm going with. I think that would be fun to do in general more at the end of the year as I'm planning a different series. But for now, I think I'm good. But I just, I sat down and I did the first three pages. Yes, the first three pages of this, which was all of my brain dumping of my main character. I only did the one. I didn't have time or space to do the second. Um, what the figuring out the tone of the story, which I did with Swan Song, and I'm so glad I did because it gave me. I'm an atmospheric writer in that I love my descriptions to kind of give you a physical feel of the place. Um, and then I listed all of my side characters that I knew, and there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Well, there's a dog. Does that count? Like he's a character, but he's he's not going to be a main character. Anyways, which you know, our parents and siblings and 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 and, and governesses. Not everybody had a name. I think, well, I'll not take that back. Only one person so far does not have a name. And I need, uh, well, I don't like the one person's name, so two people don't have a name. The second page was a brain dump of the general conflict, the central conflict of the story. Um, everything you know about this, the story's conflict and the central question. So I wrote down the main external conflict and the main internal conflict. Um, and then I want to go back to this page possibly tomorrow and figure out the thematic question, which is something that's very important to me. I love when the author has taken the time to think through not just the themes that are present, but what question the book asks of the audience. And I love it when, and I had this epiphany last year when I attended a, an online writers uh, convention. It was called a summit and it was absolutely incredible, but the whole summit revolved around your themes. And the, the big takeaway that I had from that was that your theme question, that the question that it asks the reader, the book, should be open-ended. So not a is or a was or a should question, but a what or a how or a why question that you could have a dozen different answers for. And then show through the eyes of the different characters their answers to that question and the natural consequences of those answers being played out in their lives. Um, so that, that is a way to express and explore a theme without having it be a one note message coming across, um, which I absolutely love. So I want to write down the thematic question, that open ended what, why or how question and see how it relates back to everybody. And then the, the third page was any specific settings that I could think of. And I listed six specific settings that I knew. And I don't think I'm going to know any more until I actually outline. Uh, and then how the, the opening scene, as much detail as you know. And I gave each of these characters an opening scene. And then there will be, I already have in mind, a third scene that's going to um, introduce them in the same room. They're going to be in the same space and them being together. Um, because they do know each other from the beginning of the story, which is different, very different from the one I'm writing right now. The final question on this page was, how does your story end? I already kind of know how the story, I, I know, well, I know how the story ends, but I didn't have time again. I was so sore from sitting in this hard kitchen chair because I don't have a good office chair yet. Even with a cushion, it wasn't comfortable. And it was like 2.30 in the afternoon or two, yeah, it was about 2.30 in the afternoon and I needed to lay down and take a nap which I did for an hour and a half. It was amazing. I didn't sleep the whole time, but I just rested. And it was so great. Baby was very happy. So the remaining questions, oh, well, there's really only this one page. And these are the two things that I may work on tomorrow. Oh, I hear footsteps. So there's that final question. And then there's one more page, which is a giant dump of what else do you currently know about your novel? Snippets of conversations, relationship drama, plot points, random scenes, put it all on the page. And it's a giant page. I'm totally doing this tomorrow. 
Um, there's also, so those two questions will be tomorrow. There's also, uh, it must be later, uh, but what I have left is the very, very basic kind of sheet that basically takes all of that and simplifies it. And then 10 possible scenes, which I think that I'll also do tomorrow. Um, but if I can take these two and include them, that would be great. And then after that, so next weekend, what I would love to do is dig in deeper and start figuring out more of the nitty gritty behind my villain, but also behind the actual plot beats and then diving into opening those plot beats up into what scenes might fit in, which is where I would be using the math that I talked about in yesterday's clip. <laughs> so that's what I have from this, but that's not all. I was very excited. I opened up a Google Doc and I put in Project Glass Brainstorming and beats, I think as the title, and I put in the five basic beats that I know of this story, which are the catalyst, what launches us into the story to begin with, the debate, which is the questions that the main characters, the two main characters are gonna be asking themselves about why they do or don't want to pursue this, this adventure into the next act, uh, whether that be like an actual adventure or just you know, how they're going to handle things basically moving forward. I knew the midpoint for both of them, which I think was really good to come up with because that is going to really tell a lot about where other elements of the fairy tale and their character arcs fit before the midpoint and after. It's going to help me pace things so much better. I figured out the, I called it the dark night of the soul. I think it was technically a combination of both because it was some realizations that are made as the characters can understand and see where their own misbeliefs and fears and desires and uh, selfishnesses have led them and what they need to do in order to be able to help the other people around them, be the hero, all of those good things. Uh, and then I figured out the finale, um, the climactic end for both of them, which for both of them was multiple things. Like there's going to be a central conflict at the end that it's going to be the climax but there are multiple points to that even in the save the cat there's actually like a five beat finale but there is definitely going to be like a climactic moment and then there's these other things sprinkled around it and i felt like that just having that done felt amazing i feel like i know so much about the story now and next weekend again i can go in and start opening this stuff up and really looking at the remaining beats and figuring out scenes that i would like to include and figuring out these characters more now i am trying to figure out when i want to read through the creating character arcs book by km wyland that is my favorite character reference of anything that i have ever read because it literally Really takes the outline of the story and the beats therein and it shows why the character's arc matters in each one of those plot beats and questions to ask yourself about how your character is growing spiraling whatever through those moments and how what they're doing affects everything in the external level which is going to make the story so much deeper so much truer so much more relatable and exciting to read but that is for another time and what I'm thinking is maybe I will save that for my fourth and final week of the official outlining because I feel like that is kind of where that's gonna where that's gonna end up. If I do the basic and finish fleshing out a full beat sheet of this story next weekend, um, then the next logical step would be then weaving the character arc through that outline and seeing how we can tighten up the actual outline through the use of the scene math, <laughs> which I am very excited about. But that is all that I have for you today. That is the official Preptober week two check in and all of the information things are going very well i am having a blast i feel like i am learning uh and it's so much fun to be able to bounce two projects i actually had somebody ask me the other day how i did two projects and to me in my head it makes perfect sense i can force myself to work through the hard part of first drafting as much as i love it it is hard during the work week and then I have these weekends where I get to do something fun and inspiring and refill that creative well with the brainstorming process. And it's actually keeping the cycle going where I'm just like, by the time I get to Monday, I'm ready to dive in and actually start writing this book so I can finish it, so I can publish it. And then you know, I get to the end of the week and I'm exhausted. And then I'm like, oh, I don't have to be exhausted. Tomorrow I get to outline. And it's very exciting. So if you've never tried multiple multiple projects and you're curious how people do it. Uh, that's how I'm doing it right now. And it's working beautifully. I may do a whole video just on how I balance those and what it looks like and, and the benefits that I see, the cons that I experience, etc. But that's a video for another time. I am done. I am going to go and fix supper and enjoy a walk in this 
glorious weather. Make sure to like and to comment and we can talk in the comments about what you're working on for NaNoWriMo. Um, I love you all very much. I hope you have an amazing rest of the weekend writing. I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.